It's the Vegas Take. Hey, Don. Right here, 101.5 FM 720 AM. I'm Brian Feldman, pinch hitting for Sharp and Shapiro here today, right up until 8 o'clock. And in uh, just a few minutes, we are going to be joined. Is, is he on yet or no? JD's on? Oh, sweet. J.D. Sharp joining us right now from the Raiders draft party. Uh, J.D. just beat the hell out of the Vegas Golden Knights topic, as you guys did yesterday for the first hour of the show. <laughs> Hard to get away from. You know, J.D., the way that I describe it, I'm going to leave it at this because th- that horse has already been put in the Elmer's glue factory. Yeah, let's, let's keep going. Well, let's but, keep doing well, well here's, here's what You're I said. Here's what I said, brother. I said, you know what? To me, it's like the best way to describe the feeling, and it's felt this way for two days now. It feels like I either got kicked in the private parts or some girl that I really like broke up with me. It's the only way I can be. I'm just empty inside, man. It's disgusting. I was at I was at City National today. I'm still trying to get over it, and yet I don't even play for him. I'm just a media guy and a fan. But I, it just to see it to see history potentially changed by officiating makes me want to vomit. And I think everyone else. And I'll leave it at this, JD. And you and Brian can discuss this on the show. But you know, no one has said this. You know how simple it, it would have been to get that call right. I don't know if you've gotten a chance to hear what I said earlier. And Dan Duva just completely agreed with me. You know what it is. Why didn't you just go look at Joe Pavalski? You said he was cross-checked in the face. A stick is going to leave a mark. Look at his face. Nothing wrong with the guy's face. The the injury is to the back of his head where his helmet was. Right away, you're like, okay, well, he didn't get cross-checked in the face. Worst case, it's a five-minute major. One goal, we're back to full strength. I'm going to leave it right there. But to me, how simple would that have been? Just go look at the guy's face. Take a look at him, and you'll see he was not cross-checked there. Because I promise you, I've played hockey since I was knee-high to a toadstool. When you get hit in the face with a stick, it leaves a mark. It's that simple. Um, it would have been very, very simple. It's good that an apology was given by the NHL, it's even better that both these refs aren't refing the second round. But, you know, and like Bill Foley said today, and like Dan Duva said today, this cost Bill Foley, this cost the Golden Knights, this cost about 50 or $60 million. Absolutely. And they probably would have made the Stanley Cup because the Avalanche, they were going to beat the Avalanche, and I think they would have beat the Stars or the Blues as well. So, uh, you know, it is what it is, but hopefully it never happens again. And hopefully... They institute this instant replay rule. That's that's been long, long needed for the NHL. Well, yeah, they got the bottom line is they go to Toronto to see whether it's a goal or not. Go to Toronto before you before you literally kick someone out of a game that's going to decide a playoff series. End of story. I think that change will definitely be made. And yes, it was nice that the NHL did apologize for screwing up for the screwing up the officiating. But I'm still really pissed. Don Van Massenhoven, who was the senior series supervisor, I don't know if you heard this. He said the major penalty was given because the cross check caused significant injury. Liar! Because right at the game time, you said it was because it was a cross-check to the face. Done. I'm, I'm done with that. T- um, hey, J.D., I'm, I'm jealous you're at the draft party down there for the Raiders. First of all, how was that going? And I gotta tell you, five out of, four out of my first five teams, I picked completely right. I had them to the T. The one I didn't get was the Oakland Raiders, who had me scratching my head. I had them yeah, taking it's, Josh it's, Allen it's, with it's that pick. cool down here. I'm at the I'm in, I'm in the pool area at Dre's. It's, it's a really nice setup. They they really they really did a good job of trying to. I mean, it's you, you've got media, you've got a little bit of media, but you've got a lot of club club members, season ticket holders. I mean, there's there's probably maybe two or three thousand people here. Great food, great drinks. The Raiders all over the place dancing and, and, and doing what have you. Um, JT the Bricks hosting it. They've got a bunch of former players here. They they did a very very good job of welcoming the Raiders to Las Vegas. And Dre's, I've never been to Dre's before. That is, a, that is a state-of-the-art facility. I will be coming back. Oh, Dre's is the place, man. I mean, you know, if I was uh, 20 years younger, I'd probably have a hammock, a permanent hammock there. But, uh, <laughs> but, but you know... I, I, have, I have no doubt that that is the truth. 100%. You know, so the Cardinals, I mean, this subject is going to be beat up over the next week. I'll probably beat it up again on my show on Sunday. The Kyler Murray, the fascination with this guy. The one thing I will say about Kyler Murray, we, I'm not going to, again, beat up the fact that he's undersized We all know that he weighs like 20 or 30 pounds less than Baker Mayfield. But Tyler Murray has proven that he can make every throw. There's four throws NFL quarterbacks need to make. Tyler Murray has proven he can make all four of those. Now, he hasn't done it against NFL competition yet, but he's proven that. Other than that, I am amazed, astonished, bewildered, flabbergasted that the Arizona Cardinals went all in on Josh Allen last year, or excuse me, excuse me, Josh Rosen last year, and now they're going all in on another quarterback a year later. I said earlier, it reminds me of the Detroit Lions when like three straight years they used the number one draft pick. They used the number one pick on a wide receiver, none of them yeah, stuck yeah. more than two seasons. What the hell is wrong with the Arizona Cardinals? It, it reminds me of the, the Charles Rogers, Mike Williams situation. I, I totally agree with that. 
I'm not a big I'm not a big Murray fan. I think he's actually more like a like a short five nine, and he looked really small up there. I don't think that he can take NFL hits. I think if he tries to run, it's going to be a really bad decision. Uh, he, the, the Big Twelve defenses are, I mean, they're tremendously bad. I mean, they they were really they were paltry last year. And the reason that they drafted Kyler Murray is because they need they need they need tickets. He is getting hype behind him, and he does fit Kingsbury's offense. But I think it's just a really really bad pick for them. They should have traded down, in my opinion. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. As far as the Raiders pick with with Cleveland Farrell, Cleveland Farrell. It, it, you have to trust Mike Mayock. You know, you, you watched him on, on the NFL Network for years and years doing the combine. He really, really knows what he's talking about. Quinn Farrell's got about a seven-foot wingspan. He's 6'5", 250. He's quick. You know, that Clemson defense just dismantled Alabama last year. I, I think that he, they probably could have got him a little bit later, but maybe not at 10, maybe not at 14. Also, he's a big, big character guy. And if, if you watched the actual – because he wasn't actually – he didn't expect to be drafted that high. He's got tears in his eyes. He's around his entire family. He's very, very excited. And I, I think he's going to take full advantage of the fact that he's the number four pick by the Raiders. I don't hate the pick. I would have preferred Ed Oliver or Josh Allen, but, you know, it, it, it's not – I would give him, give him maybe a BB plus with, with a very, very I – mean, he has a high ceiling. And let's be honest, the Raiders only had 13 sacks last year. They need sacks. Farrell can really rush the quarterback. Yeah, Cleveland Farrell's a solid player. 38 tackles, 21 sacks in his last two seasons. I do like the guy, but honestly, J.D., I had him going 22nd to the Baltimore Ravens yeah. in my mock, mock draft. I did have him going to the 20s. I thought the Raiders could definitely have gotten him potentially at, at a later pick. So that was a surprise to me, and I, I did love uh, Josh Allen. I had a faux pas calling, uh, calling uh, Josh Rosen Josh Allen, but Josh Allen, an unbelievable edge outside linebacker for Kentucky. 14 sacks, 18 and a half tackles for loss last season. I am amazed he fell to the Jacksonville Jaguars, who now is a team that is getting scarier by the minute. Uh, they already had a pretty strong defense, and uh, now they've got a quarterback uh, that's got a lot of experience, a Super Bowl champion quarterback. That's going to be a formal team. What surprised me so far, another thing that surprised me about the draft, and I think it's a good surprise, Daniel Jones out of Duke going to the New York Giants. I thought they were going to take Rashawn Gary, that defensive lineman, out of Michigan, who the guy is just a beast, and I thought he was a good pick for them there. But you knew they were looking quarterback, but a lot of people thought that Drew Locke would go before uh, Daniel Jones. That wasn't the case. Yeah, Daniel Jones has gotten a lot of late hype. Uh, I'm, I'm not real high on him either. I think he's, I think he's kind of, kind of fragile. He's about six five, two fifteen, but again, he doesn't have that, that big, sturdy, that the foundation that, that I like my NFL quarterbacks to have. I think he, I, I worry about injuries with him. I would take Dwayne Haskins there, to be honest with you. I realize his dad made some, some pretty crazy statements, but Dwayne Haskins completely decimated a very, very a very good Michigan defense that was littered with NFL players last year. I mean, what did he have, 450 yards and six touchdowns and no interception? Yep. At 70% completion. Dwayne Haskins would, would have been my guy there. But Daniel Jones is, you know, he's moving up the boards, and the, the Giants are obviously that they wanted a quarterback, and they got their guy. Yeah, well, Haskins fell all the way down to number 15 and went to the Washington Redskins, who, uh, you know, obviously Alex Smith at his age and the injury that he sustained last year to the Achilles, that guy's done. So I think that's a great pick for the Redskins, another team I can't stand that's going to be getting better because I think that Dwayne Haskins, unlike some of the past Ohio State quarterbacks that haven't morphed into the National Football League, this is a guy that will, he's got the size, he's got the charisma, he's got the skill, and he's been leading for a long time at the highest collegiate level. I think think he'll fit in pretty good right here and I want to ask you you know I knew this was going to be the pick it was my pick and of course it's my homer thing JD and I want your take on this uh TJ Hawkinson out of Iowa I know the guy is a beast the guy can catch he can block he is extremely aggressive but a tight end with the eighth pick in the NFL draft that's not called Gronkowski yeah, it's the Lions drafted Ebron four years ago, and Ebron actually had better stats than 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 Hawkinson. He was a four he was a four three five guy. He was six four two forty. You know, Hawkinson six five two fifty five. He is an amazing blocker. I mean, he, he's he's a prototypical tight end. But the Lions just have other needs, in my opinion. I don't think that's a great pick for them, especially. I mean, you, you don't want to draft a first round tight end in the top ten picks within a four year window of each other. You just don't want to do that. And but I do think I, I think Hawkinson is going to be a great NFL player, as is Noah Fant. Uh, but again, I, I think that's a that, that's a, a bit of a reach for the Lions there. I don't, I don't really know why they drafted, to be honest with you. 
Yeah, surprising to me, and another surprising pick, although I do like Jonah Williams, who went to the Cincinnati Bengals with the 11th draft choice. I mean, this is a team that has got to start preparing for the future, and that means replacing Andy Dalton. I am amazed that that team did not take Haskins. I actually thought that's where he was going to go, and what are they thinking? Are they really going to let the red water pistol play quarterback for them for another season? <laughs> well, I think they kind of have to at this point. There's, they don't really have a choice. Why Jalen would you Lynch pass up on a, a guy like Haskins if you're Cincinnati? What, are you going to wait for two years, tank for two years, and hope that you get Trevor Lawrence out of Clemson? Into, uh, what are they doing? Yeah, basically. Well, I mean, let's be honest, Lawrence could have gone pro this year and been a top five pick. He's just unbelievable. Um, it's going to be a battle for him when, when that time comes. But Jonah Williams, is a, he's, a, he's a prototypical left tackle. Yeah, I think he had a total of two sacks given up in his entire career. I don't think he even had any pressures last year against him. He, he, he approaches the game from a very, very uh, – he actually writes down all of this – all of, every opponent he plays against, and he puts them in like an Excel chart. He graphs everything. He's very, very uh, calculated with his approach to, to playing the position. So I think he's a, he's, he's a good pickup for the Bengals, and they definitely needed help at left tackle. Uh, but, but, yeah, Andy Dalton and, – but you, you have to realize the Bengals do have a lot of weapons. A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, John Ross when he's healthy, C.J. Uzoma, uh, Tyler Eifert. It just depends. I think, I think that they in Joe Mixon. I think they have the weapons uh, to be successful. They just they, they took a lot of injuries last year, and, and I, I, they're hoping that Andy Dalton gets back to his old form of you know two or three years ago. Nobody makes me more money in the playoffs than the Cincinnati Bengals. Just bet against them, you'll always win. It happens yeah. to me every year. Uh, though you know who's got to be really unhappy about the Cincinnati Bengals pick though is the Carolina Panthers. I know that Cam Newton was chopping at the bit to get Jonah Williams to protect his backside. That's not going to happen now, and Carolina instead goes with. With, um, I believe it was Brian Burns, the edge rusher from uh, from Florida State. Yeah, Brian Burns is a he's a smaller guy. You know, he's he's, he's got that six foot five size, probably six five two forty. Ran a four five two at the combine. Great athlete. Uh, he, he he's kind of that that edge rusher that all these NFL teams are looking for. That Josh Allen is, and you're right. I did, I didn't comment on this, but the Jaguars adding a guy like Josh Allen to their team. I mean that 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 is legitimately scary. Their their defense is already fantastic. Uh, it's pretty much complete. You've got Miles Jack, uh, Jalen Ramsey, the, the very good defensive defensive line. Yeah, Brian Burns is a he's, he's a solid pick, but that's that's kind of where these teams are going. Is is they're looking for those those really really speed rush guys who can get to the quarterback quickly and and, and rack up sacks and force fumbles. I like I like that call. And now again, I just jumping ahead a little bit because I want to let you get back to the party and make sure you have a cold beverage and something good to eat for me since I'm starving right now. Okay, but uh, the Oakland Raiders have the 24th pick coming up the, from the Chicago Bears, one of their picks that they got from the Bears, and that is going to be late 24. I'm looking, you know, where they need some help, and and, and correct me if I'm wrong because they've got two picks coming up in the 20s. They got the 24th pick from the Bears, and they've got the 27th pick from the Raiders. I got a feeling that we're going to be looking at a defensive back with the next pick of the Oakland Raiders. They are really depleted in that defensive backfield. And I'm looking at a guy like Byron Murphy, who played cornerback at the University of Washington, who to me uh, can get the job done and, and it probably would fall to about that position. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, I would prefer Greedy Williams. Uh, Greedy Williams is a... I think he'll be gone. I think the Seattle Seahawks are going to take him. If, if, if he's there, I like Greedy. Byron, Byron Murphy had, had great stats at, at, at Washington. He's, he's very, very pro-ready. But they definitely need a defensive back. I agree with that. And probably at 27, I think they take Josh Jacobs, running back from Alabama, if he is available as well. I would agree with that. But I'll tell you a guy that I know that they were high on, and I read this very recently, Noah Fant, the tight end out of Iowa. They're looking yeah, at the, they've been looking at him as well. And don't be surprised if he goes with that 27th pick. Yeah, if he's there, they'll, they'll definitely take him first. But it's some type of offensive weapon for that 27th pick. But I really hope they get Greedy Williams at 24 because he's got he's six three. He's that long corner. He ran a four three seven. He's got a lot of ability. Shut down quite a few SEC wide receivers. LSU always puts out good defensive backs. He makes sense there at 24. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that this, this draft is thin on, we're not going to see a future draft thin, is there's a lot of great wide receivers coming up in college. But I don't see a wide receiver going until later in the first round. And we're looking at guys like DK Metcalf, who has all kinds of mad skills. That redshirt sophomore up in Ole Miss, uh, first of all, he's got a good pedigree. And second of all, 21.9 yards a catch last season. This guy can flat out play. I don't think he'll be the number one pick in the draft. I think, or I should say, the number one receiver going. I'm picking Marquise Brown going to the Indianapolis Colts at 26 as being the first wide receiver picked in the draft. That is really shocking that you get into almost the end of the first 
round before you're going to see your wide receiver go. Yeah, that's very surprising. Yeah, Mar- Marquise Brown and Keel Harry and DK Metcalf are probably the only guys that have a prayer of being drafted in the first round of this of this draft. Let, let, last thing, JD, before I let you go, we'll get to the back end of the draft. The Super Bowl champion, New England Patriots, of course, a team that just finds a way. I have never seen a team in the history of my life, which spans longer than I want to admit, that is more of a plug and play franchise in any sport than the New England Patriots. They just plug and play every year, and they're successful. They've got the 32nd pick in the draft. I don't know that they're going to make any moves. I'm guessing they're going to look at, to me, assessing that team. Yes, they need some help at the wide receiver position, but I think they also need some help in the secondary. And my pick, I'm giving, I'm going on a limb right now. I'm going to say they're going to take a safety out of Mississippi State, who I really like, Jonathan Abram. My guess. Your guess is Jonathan Abram? Yep. I would not be shocked if the Patriots traded that pick. I mean, Bill Belichick is so ahead of everybody else defensively. You're right. Uh, you're right. They, they do plug and play. But one thing, but you're right, they, they do tend to spend their first-round picks on defensive players, like a Malcolm Brown, Jason McCourty. Absolutely. Uh, players like Ger- Gerard Mayo, for example. Um, I, would be, I would be shocked to see maybe a Taylor Rapp. He's a safety out of Washington as well. He's, he's, he's kind of coming up. He's about 6'3", 210, rangy guy. Those Washington defensive backs get a lot of respect at the NFL level. I wouldn't be shocked to see, some, to see something like that happen with the Patriots or trade their pick because, like I said, they're just they're so much more ahead, and especially Belichick as a defensive coach. Nobody's even close to Belichick as a defensive coach. Nope, I agree. And, and one other thing, the the, um, the the team that played the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl, the Los Angeles Rams, um, there's a pretty good offensive lineman that might slide down that far. The center out of North Carolina State, I think it's Garrett Bradbury. I like the guy a lot. And they need a center. And man, oh man, make that offensive line stronger and give Todd Gurley more running. Like Austin Bliss, the guy from Iowa? Oh, I do. I like drafted free agent from Iowa? I like him. I like him, but I... <laughs> you know, I'll leave that alone. Other than I think that this kid would be would be great there. JD, what do you what do you expect? What give me give me a surprise in the draft? Somebody that you think that we're expecting to come off the board in the first round that you think is going to slip to the second round or even beyond? Uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see Greedy Williams slip a little bit. Not to, not to the second round, but I, I, to slip. I, I think Greedy Williams is a top five talent. Well, he definitely opinion. has the best name in this year's NFL draft, in my he's, opinion. He's, yeah, Andres William III is his actual name, but Greedy Williams is a he's a superbly athletic and talented guy out of LSU that I'm extremely high on. But you know what? I could actually see Noah Fant slipping as well if the Raiders don't pick him up at 27. Or the Patriots at 32, potentially, if they don't trade their pick. Yeah, Greedy Williams, I'll tell you what, this guy flies. He ran a sub-4-4-40 at yeah, the NFL right, Combine. Like a four, three, I mean, you can name the last corner who's been all SEC or all conference, who played well, who had great tape and was productive in college, who ran a 4-3-7 at 6-3, 200 or whatever. I mean, it, just, it doesn't make any sense that he's even there right now. You're right, I, because I, this I guy... Was a top five he, talent. I, thought the, I really thought the Raiders might pick him up at 4 you know, two or three months ago. You know, I so. agree with you 100%. The guy, the guy flies, and he is a big dude, and he hits like a silent freight train. And yeah, uh, yeah. And, and he's very, very long and linear, which you have to have. You have to have that long wingspan. Yeah, he's gonna. Corner. He stays healthy. You're talking about a future All Pro. I love Greedy Williams. Well, one of my one of my favorite players. And you know, like I said, I had him. My, just by the way the draft goes and what you hear and read, I had him going 22nd to the Seattle Seahawks. But we'll see. And I think where we're at right now, I haven't refreshed it. Has Tennessee made their pick? I'm looking. Have, I'm looking I, right I now. Know. I know they were up. I know that the last one was Garrett Bradbury by the Minnesota Vikings, and um, and I think uh, I don't know if Seattle's on the board yet. Well, I guess Denver's on the board. I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell here. It's, it, my the computer's refreshing now. It's taken some time. I think it got tired of me screaming about the Vegas Golden Knights. So, listen, JD. You, know what you can do. You can actually turn on the TV in there. Turn at the ESPN and fall draft right above you. You know what? I see that. I will. I will do that. See, I wish someone would have informed me on that at the beginning. <laughs> I got forty minutes left, but I will watch the draft. He is JD Sharp along with Brian Shapiro. They are the Vegas take, and they are normally here Monday through Friday, six to eight p.m. on K Dawn. That is one hundred one point five FM, seven twenty a.m. And uh, JD, we appreciate you. I'm jealous, and please enjoy yourself for moi, will you? I will I will try. I will make a conscious effort to enjoy myself. And Brian, you're doing a great job and thanks for telling me today. I appreciate it. And, and tell Shapiro to relax now. He doesn't need to get anybody on anybody. Tell him to enjoy the draft party and uh, and relax. He can get on people again tomorrow.
Absolutely. All right, thanks, buddy. J.D. Yeah. Sharp, of course, joining the show from the draft party at Dre Nightclub. How cool is that? I sacrifice my draft party ticket to come here and talk about the Golden Knights. But the bottom line is, like I told Dan Duva, I can't get rid of this pacifier. I'm still wearing my huggies, and uh, I'm crying a little bit, okay? And that may go on for a while. I'm a Red Wings fan, but I'm a converted Vegas Golden Knights fan, and it was lousy. It was crappy what we saw happen. And, again, just to stick around because in a little while we will, uh, we will be uh, talking to – uh, Michael from um, TMZ Sports. I'm really looking forward to that. This should be a good time. Michael Babcock, I should say. Uh, they've got some stories right now. They've got one in there, I think, on um, on uh, Tariq Hill from Kansas City. We'll find out about him. Uh, th- I guess there were some recordings, uh, uh, things that he had said to his fiance that are really, really bad. Uh, man, Kansas City losing Kareem Hunt and then Tariq Hill. You're talking about a, a Super Bowl contender last year. You lose those two guys. You're losing two of your top skilled position players. Really put some pressure on them. And also uh, some other stuff in the news at TMZ Sports we'll be talking about as well. Looking very forward to that. Um, and uh, something pretty cool. Uh, guess who's on the cover of Sports Illustrated speaking? I uh, on Sports Illustrated, the cover of Madden 2020 speaking of the Kansas City Chiefs, if that gives you a clue. Uh, Michael Babcock will talk about that as well when he comes on board. But um, just wrapping up with the NFL draft here, you know, a l- little bit. You can't wait a lot of this on the draft. And like I said, I, my picks, I'm pretty happy with them. There's still a lot of really good players in the draft as we go down. Uh, you know, guy, guys like I just mentioned, Garrett Bradbury, an offensive lineman, this guy can block out the sun. He is a big dude. Uh, played at North Carolina State, and, you know, I, I hate it. He's going to the Minnesota Vikings, and they need it. they got to protect Kirk Cousins. Those of you that love Kirk Cousins that are Vikings fan, well, I went to Michigan State. I graduated from Michigan State. You think I would be all over Kirk Cousins like a hobo on a ham sandwich? I'm not. Okay, I'm not sold on Kirk Cousins. I never have been. Um, he turned out to be a better quarterback than RG3 just because RG3 got hurt. Uh uh, you know, the injury that RG3 had, he should have never played a week later. He might be a whole different, you know, guy might have written a whole different history for himself. Unfortunately, that injury, uh, it wasn't career ending, but it might as well have been. Whether he gets another chance and ever comes through, who knows. But Kirk Cousins, not the greatest thing since sliced bread. And you saw the Vikings fall off with Kirk Cousins after a year a year earlier. Case Keenum takes him to one of the best records in the National Football League. So, uh, Vikings might want to start looking in the direction of a quarterback in the near future. Remember I said that after the 2019-2019 uh, season. You let me know what you think about that one. But we've got the NFL draft uh, going on here, um, and it's going on for a little bit while longer. We'll keep you updated as more players are picked. I'm trying to get down here and see what has happened, but I still don't see. I see that uh, Jeffrey Simmons went to the Tennessee Titans with the 19th pick in the draft. And I still don't have who the Denver Broncos took, and I thought I did. So let me refresh this again and see if I can find out who they took. Uh, We're going to be going to break here in a minute or so. Remember, we've got Michael Babcock coming up with TMZ Sports. Uh, If you want to give me a call, seriously, I'd love to talk to you now. We can take callers. Uh, It is 702-257-5396 is the Kadon studio line. Give Ken a call in there. He'll patch you through. And uh, you want to talk Vegas Golden Knights? I'm down. You want to talk about the NFL draft? I'm down. NBA playoffs, Damian Lillard, what he did the other night, wow, I'm down. Um, Anyone going to beat the Golden State Warriors? What do you think? Anybody out there think that the Golden State Warriors will get knocked off in this year's playoff? I mean, they lost Boogie Cousins, right? Good luck with that. Do you really think the Golden State Warriors are going to lose in a seven-game series? I don't blame you if you do. If you do, you don't watch a lot of basketball. And I'm sorry if I'm giving you grief. You know, I know that a couple of years ago it did happen. The Cleveland Cavaliers did come back with LeBron James and Kyrie Irving and won the NBA championship. I remember that. That's not this team. And that team was also did not include Kevin Durant. Uh, this Golden State Warrior team is not going to be beaten. Um, it'll be interesting to see who they play. I really thought that maybe Toronto, and I still do, might come out of the East. But I'll tell you right now, man... And Kawhi Leonard's ridiculous. He really is. But do not sleep on the Milwaukee Bucks. They finished number one in the Eastern Conference for a reason. In my opinion, they have the most exciting and fun-to-watch player in the National Basketball Association. Might be hard to say his name. 
but Giannis is as good as it gets. And if you want to watch some exciting basketball, this guy for his size can do absolutely everything on a court from bang from the perimeter, bang from inside, play defense, steal, block, rebound, you name it. This guy has every facet of the game down, and he's still learning the game. He's still developing as a player. You want to talk about lights out? Giannis is lights out. And don't be the least bit surprised if his skills are good enough to take the Milwaukee Bucks to the NBA Finals to get beaten five by the Golden State Warriors. I'm not predicting that. I'm saying his skills are good enough to do it. You want to argue with me? Give me a call, 702 257 Five three nine six, and um, again NFL draft. Uh, Seattle Seahawks. I guess they're up now. Denver Broncos. Who did they take? Why is it not refreshing? Hold on, I'm gonna be getting it. Picks in. It said the pick is in, and here we go. Okay, wait a minute. Let me let me scroll down again and see if I'm back. If I'm live. Hold on, there. It's still populating. Wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Denver Broncos. I still don't have a pick for the Denver Broncos. Maybe I'll find one. They, they've had to have picked by now. So I'm, uh, I'll am i keep looking for that. I'll try to find that during break, see what happens. A lot of great players still on the board uh, with projections that aren't getting picked. We'll be back again. This is Brian Feldman. This is the Vegas Take. I am pinch hitting today for Brian Shapiro and J.D. Sharp. We will be here right up until 8 o'clock. And after this break, we will be talking to Michael Babcock from TMZ Sports. Looking very forward to it. We'll be right back. <laughs> 